Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Jonah Fontenot. Now, some of you may remember Jonah when he was on our network previously. Now, last time he was here, we were discussing his other book entitled Beyond Now. Now, the interview went so well. We had such great reviews and such a wonderful response from it. So we had to invite Jonah back on for the sequel, in a sense, to Beyond Now, Lessons. And that's the anchor for today's interview. Lessons, of course, is available for purchase directly through the publishing company, Author Reputation Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and move it through ARP. You can find out more information on them and their fantastic company at AuthorReputationPress.com. Let's get it started. Jonah, welcome back to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest with us today, man. How are you? I am well. Doing very well. I'm happy to be on your show again. Absolutely. Likewise. Listen, we're very much looking forward to this in the words of wisdom that we're going to be able to steal from you today, Jonah. Now, before we go into the book, let's hold off slightly for our listening audience that happened to miss the first interview. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background, please. Uh, well, I'm originally from Southern California. Um, my upbringing was extraordinarily uh, violent and oppressive. Um, not just for myself, but for my siblings uh, as well. Um, and uh, this presented tremendous obstacles to overcome. Um, two biggest obstacles for me was overcoming a very deep-seated anger uh, that I neither knew nor recognized uh, for most of my life. And the other was uh, education. None of us were allowed an education of any kind, even homeschool. We weren't homeschooled. Uh, so those two very enormous obstacles put before me took years to overcome. Um, oh, if I nice. had to choose one or the other and I could not overcome both, I could only overcome one, it would have been the anger. The anger that builds up inside someone, having been through uh, a childhood like I like I endured, um, is a poison. It's this vicious monster. Um, and so I write a lot about the struggles uh, in uh, caging that monster and accepting that the monster might never die. I just have to keep it in check. So I, I write about that, um, and in the book Lessons, since we draw lessons from our predecessors, our parents, uh, our associates, our observations, and our own life experiences, I also uh, wrote about, about my dad for the first time in this book, um, wow. and I have more poems in lessons that are about other people. So I'm looking forward to introducing that to my readers. Absolutely. You know, Jonah, as you were speaking, man, it, it was all starting to rush back to me. And I remember so many of the comments that we had received from the first interview were all people that resonated with what you were talking about. Now, again, Guys, you may not be able to relate to every specific circumstance, but at the end of the day, so many people had similar responses in the sense of, hey, I when I heard the interview, it brought me back to a lot of the childhood traumas that I had experienced through my upbringing, through either siblings, parents, whatever the case may be, but these childhood traumas that were put in how... People had to struggle and work 
endlessly to overcome them and to, to really reprogram their mentality, right? To break out of what they were told and what they were taught. And so many people were just constantly, A, talking about how they could relate and B, how commendable and brave you were for really showcasing and constructing that window, right? For other people to view into some of the most personal aspects of your life. And we absolutely love that because that in and of itself, guys, Jonah by no means is alone in what he is discussing. As unfortunate as it may be, there are so many other people in similar circumstances. And what I love about having this platform is even with the book of this magnitude and even when we were, when we were discussing beyond now and we're hearing some heartbreaking experiences that he had the beautiful and the silver lining to that is now we're shining a light on these dark areas, right? We're illuminating these dark areas. And what Jonah is doing by being the first to showcase himself in that light, he's formulating a bridge with other people that have similar experiences. He's raising the awareness of what some of these traumas look like and what these traumas lead to when they're unaddressed right? There's so much wisdom. There's so much power in his words. I'm looking forward to the sequel. I'm looking forward to lessons. I want to know what Jonah learned, <laughs> as I'm sure you all do as well. So Jonah, without further ado, man, let's jump into the book, Lessons. Give us a brief synopsis of what it entails. Uh, well, the, the title is a, is a fair synopsis itself, it's simply a one-word synopsis. Um, lessons uh, discusses uh, in poetic manner, of course, um, not the journey I'm on, but the lessons I've picked up along the way. Um, people I have observed, relationships I've been in, in relationships I have observed, uh, pain that I've experienced and pain that I have observed. And instead of dwelling on how miserable a circumstance may be, the poems I present in my book discuss more ways to make people feel better about the stress uh, they feel or the experiences they have suffered, um, losses they've experienced. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but Growing up, uh, my father was deaf. Um, he was murdered in 2007. Oh, I'm so sorry. But uh, everything about him I still remember. I remember uh, the way he laughed. I remember the way he walked. I remember everything about him. Um, and there was somebody he had a conversation with and I remember this conversation uh, as an observer when I was quite young and this person, whoever she was she made a living working with deaf people teaching them how to speak normally and I remember she offered to help my dad and he said, I don't need any help I'm not disabled I'm just deaf and when I was in the Army, um, I met many people who were missing limbs. I was in an infantry unit. And I remember one guy telling me about a program that was made available to him, some kind of, um, some kind of life improvement service um, that's supposed to help people psychologically deal with uh, loss of limbs, loss of vision, you know, things like that. It's not just the fact that you can no longer see. There's a great deal of, of uh, traumatic stress that comes with that. Um, and mm -hmm. it can often lead, uh, you know, lead to terrible things like suicide uh, and hopelessness. When you weren't born blind, you weren't born that way, uh, you don't feel like you're supposed to be that way because just a week ago, you were not like that. And so he said, and he's, he was missing two limbs, and he said that his response to that was, thanks, but it doesn't bother me. 
I want to be like that. Whatever I've been through, I want to be totally cool with it. And if I can get there, then maybe I could help someone else get to that same kind of mental position. And if you think about it, that's really the best way to go. Um, some of the um, happiest people I've ever known were poor as church mice, but their kids they had no idea mm-hmm. because they had everything they needed. They had laughter and they had happiness and they had a strong bond. And, you know, they had always had someone to talk to and, you know, they, 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 they shared each, each other's troubles. This is a fantastic way to, to live wherever you are, whatever kind of conditions you live in. What if you could be happy with it? or you could find happiness. Uh, isn't that really the best way to go? Because we can't eliminate stress. If we isolated ourselves completely from society and we lived uh, as a hermit or we lived off the land and in, in the jungle somewhere, we would still have tremendous stress mm-hmm. because there's animals out there to get us. We have to worry about the elements. Uh, we have to worry about finding food. We have to get through the winter if you're, the environment you know, is, is like that. Uh, there's always, always, always stress. So handling stress, processing it, that's what we can do better. And that's what I have learned to do better uh, since I got treatment for it. And since I started studying psychology, uh, what, uh, 13 years ago, um, I have, uh, I've learned a lot about what stress is, how it affects us and how to handle it and how to handle it better. Cause I was not doing it well. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, that is a very, <laughs> that is that's arguably the most important lesson I've learned in my life. What he's talking about here is is something that's so powerful. And my next question that I want to ask you, Jonah, and part of me almost feels like this is a bit unfair to ask because it's so broad. But I hear what you're saying, right? And you're posing questions or statements, rather, of what you want to achieve and where you want to get. And you're also talking about your time studying psychology and the education and investment that you've put in to not only your own mental health, but also in answering the questions to help the broader perspective of mental health in general, right? And how people deal with stress, so on and so forth. So I want to take this opportunity, Jonah, again, as unfair and as broad as it may be, humor me, entertain myself and my listening audience and try to answer this or formulate an answer for it. Jonah, we know that your book Lessons is about the lessons you have learned. Now, as you're just talking about, your background and things that you're exploring is all about mental stability, right? And the stress that, listen, we may be able to avoid certain things, but at the end of the day, life is going to happen. Whether you're here, you're in another country, or even if you're on a different planet, I promise you there's still going to be things that you are stressed about. It just looks different. Well, Jonah, I want to take an opportunity, any words of wisdom that you can offer our listening audience, lessons that you talk about in the book that you have learned? That is indeed a very broad question, (laughs) um, but not one one I consider unfair. There is not a one-word answer for that. Um, Some people will handle a loss in the family very, very well, uh, but not a divorce. Mm Mm-hmm. And to someone else, uh, a divorce would be absolutely devastating, uh, but not the loss of a pet or a car accident. Um, so it really it really depends uh, on each person and how uh, they see the world and and how they view themselves and and how they they how they feel like they they fit into this this big enormous jigsaw puzzle that is life, um, and aren't we all just uh, a piece in a puzzle? Um, but uh, I would say, look for yourself in others, hmm. and look for others in yourself. Um, in one of the narratives, and 
for the life of me, I can't remember which poem it is. I have this narrative, but one of the most important lessons that I have learned, um, and I wrote this in the narrative. I'll find it here probably as soon as we hang up. That's how life goes. Um, is that we're all the same in different ways. And we're all different in the same way. If I can see myself in someone else and I can observe my own behaviors as an outsider, I can have an objective view that's unspoiled and unbiased. If someone can do that, well, that's a very important skill because it can really help someone get a handle on what's bothering themselves and also why other people might have a certain impression of them. Um, For most of my life, uh, I did not understand how or even if I fit in this jigsaw puzzle of life. Um, I, I do. I have a place. I have a place in that puzzle, and we all have. Um, it's not so much finding our place, but identifying it that uh, is going to make the biggest difference. Uh, and if you think about assembling a jigsaw puzzle, you know that every piece on the table goes somewhere. Many of the pieces are the same size and the same shape, but they have different color patterns on them, and that's the only thing that sets them apart from other other pieces on the table. Or they could have a very similar color pattern, but they're a different size and shape. So there's going to be something that makes you different. It's going to be something that makes you special, but you're not an outcast. You fit in somewhere. We all do. And we all have something to offer. The way I was raised uh, convinced me for a good share of my life that I didn't fit in anywhere. I didn't belong in society. Uh, There was just no place for me. It's like society was this organization of other people. Um, But that was incorrect. There's a place for me in this world, too. And whoever's listening, there's a place for you, too. Where that is, well, where that place is, that's what's great about life, is we can often make that decision for ourselves. We can make our own place. You know, what a perfect place for for me to jump in, because that's such a great message. People, listen, Lessons is the book you have to pick up. Make sure you're picking up Beyond Now, because Lessons, of course, is the sequel to it. Now, you don't necessarily have to start there, but if you're me... Uh, that's where I'm doing. Start off with Beyond Now. Learn his journey and then figure out the lessons that he learned from that journey and what you could also learn and add into your life. Guys, this is a no-brainer. There's so much wisdom that can be acquired here. And let's call a spade a spade. Listen, giving all of the adversity that we've really as a human family, have experienced over these past few years, given the pandemic, variations of lockdown, we've all experienced the social unrest, the political divide that we have here in the country. There's a lot of adversity happening. But through moments of adversity comes growth, right? Comes development if we choose to see it from that perspective. There's silver linings in everything. Head on over to authorreputationpress.com today. Pick up your copy. Look in there frequently for other books that Jonah has upcoming. You surely will not be disappointed. A wonderful book for you to have on your shelf an even better gift for you to put on someone else's. So head on over there. Pick up your copy today. Jonah, this has been an absolute pleasure, man. Just like the first one. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. I appreciate the opportunity.